St. Augustine Commentary on Psalm 118 We are taught in this psalm when we chant Hallelujah, which means praise the Lord, that we should, when we hear the words, confess unto the Lord, verse 1, praise the Lord. The praise of God could not be expressed in fewer, in fewer words than these, for he is good. I see not what can be more solemn than this brevity, since goodness is so peculiarly the quality of God that the Son of God himself, when addressed by someone as good master, by one, namely, who, beholding his flesh, and comprehending not the fullness of his divine nature, considered him as man only, replied, Why do you call me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Mark chapter 10, verse 17 and 18 And what is this but to say, If you wish to call me good, recognize me as God. But since it is addressed in revelation of things to come to a people freed from all toil and wandering in pilgrimage and from all admixture with the wicked, which freedom was given it through the grace of God, who not only does not evil for evil, but even returns good for evil, it is most appropriately added, because his mercy endures for ever. Let Israel now confess that he is good and that his mercy endures for ever. Verse 2. Let the house of Aaron now confess that his mercy endures for ever. Verse 3. Ye, let all now that fear the Lord confess that his mercy endures for ever. Verse 4. You remember, I suppose, most beloved, what is the house of Israel, what is the house of Aaron, and that both are those that fear the Lord. For they are the little and the great. Psalm 115, verses 12 and 13. Who have already in another psalm been happily introduced into your hearts, in the number of whom all of us should rejoice that we are joined together in his grace with good and whose mercy endures for ever. Since they were listened to who said, May the Lord increase you more and more, you and your children. Psalm 115 verse 14 That the horse of the Gentiles might be called to might be added to the Israelites who believed in Christ, of the number of whom are the apostles, our fathers, for the exaltation of the perfect and the obedience of the little children, that all of us, when made one in Christ, made one flock and one shepherd, and the body of that head, like one man may say, I called upon the Lord in trouble, and the Lord heard me at large. Verse 5 The narrow straits of our tribulation are limited, but the large way whereby we pass along has no end. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Romans chapter 8 verse 33 The Lord is my helper, I will not fear what man does unto me. Verse 6 But are men then the only enemies that the church has? What is a man devoted to flesh and blood, say flesh and blood? But the apostle says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, he says, spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 That is the devil and his angels. That devil 
whom elsewhere he calls the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 Hear therefore what follows, the Lord is my helper, therefore shall I despise mine enemies. Verse 7 <clears throat> From what class soever my enemies may arise, whether from the number of evil men or from the number of evil angels in the Lord's help, and to whom we chant the confession of praise, and to whom we sing hallelujah, they shall be despised. But when my enemies have been brought to contempt, let not my friend present himself unto me as a good man, so as to bid me repose my hope in himself, for it is better to trust in the Lord than to put any confidence in man. Verse 8 Nor let anyone who may in a certain sense be styled a good angel be regarded by myself as one in whom I ought to put my trust for no one is good, save God alone. Mark chapter 10 verse 18 And when a man or an angel appear to aid us, when they do this of sincere affection, he does it through them who made them good after their measure. It is therefore better to trust in the Lord than to put any confidence in princes. Verse 9 for angels also are called princes, even as we read in Daniel, Michael, your prince. Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 All nations compass me round about, but in the name of the Lord have I taken vengeance on them. Verse 10 They kept me on every side, they kept me in, I say, on every side. But in the name of the Lord have I taken vengeance on them. Verse 11. It signifies the toil and the victory of the church, but as if the question were asked how she could have overcome so great evils, he looks back to the example and declares what she had first suffered in her head by adding what follows, they kept me, on, they kept me in on every side. And the words all nations are with reason not repeated here because this was the act of the Jews alone. There, that very religious nation, which is the body of Christ and in behalf of which was done all that was done in mortal form with immortal power by that inward divinity, through the outward flesh suffered from persecutors of whose race that flesh was assumed and hung upon the cross. They came about me as bees do a hive and burnt up even as the fire among the thorns. And in the name of the Lord have I taken vengeance on them. Verse 12 here then, the order of the words corresponds with the order of events. For we rightly understand that our Lord himself, the head of the church, was surrounded by persecutors, even as bees surround a hive. For the Holy Spirit is speaking with mystic subtlety of what was done by those who knew not what they did. For bees make honey in the hives, while our Lord's persecutors, unconscious as they were, rendered him sweeter unto us even by his very passion, so that we may taste and see how sweet is the Lord. Psalm 34 verse 8